Okay, this is my daughter Lauren's um, request. This is her birthday, so I'm trying to do something really special for her. I really didn't want to do these interviews because this is my life. Who wants to tell everybody what they did in their life? But she has this fantastic television show. She's a fantastic talent, so the least I could do on her birthday week is to do these interviews. But this is truly, all this stuff I'm telling you about it actually happened, I can prove it. I've been in and around this music business since like 1964, maybe 65, all the way up until 2004. So that's a span of about 40 plus years, maybe 50. I have so many stories to tell, some I'd love to tell you, but too many people are still alive, so. <laughs> Can't do those. <laughs> My first introduction to Luther Vandross was in New York City's Central Park with my dear friend, he's dead now, Basil Nias. Basil Nias was the uh, black radio editor of Record World. I was the black radio editor of Radio and Records. I was there first and my appointment in 1977 changed all of the trade publications in their music business. However, I wasn't the very first one in the trade publication, but I was the first one from the music broadcast industry because I did come from radio. I had experience with music, um, but they picked a lot of journalists and not people from the industry because this was a whole new thing. So when I came along um, in 77 to Radio and Records, it was a big deal because this was the most powerful trade publication in the industry and I was its first black editor. I would get all these records every week, every day. I must have gotten 150 records a week. Brand new releases. In those days, the eight tracks were still around. So you would get an eight track, a cassette, and a vinyl album of the same record. This guy named Luther Vandross came out from Sony. CBS Records had became Sony because Sony Incorporated had bought CBS Records. Sony Incorporated had turntables and stereos. You know, we, we had the AM, FM on air, and I think they thought it was a good idea to buy music, which was content for those equipment pieces, to make it useful to people. Sony was huge. They had a huge budget. I think they had at one point 144 artists. So Gladys Knight, Earth, Wind & Fire, you know, uh, Luther Vandross, Teddy Pendergrass, OJs, you know, it was that type of uh, label. Um, my friends, the main ingredient had just come back from Japan. You may remember main ingredient. Everybody, Everybody plays the fool sometimes. sometimes. There's no exception to the rule. Listen, baby. And they brought me a cassette player, a little portable cassette player. They were out in Japan with the earphones. Um, but I didn't have anything to play on it. <laughs> So my friend Vaughn down the street, uh, he was one of the head of publicity for Sony. Had these two albums on cassette, and one of them was Teddy Pendergrass Live, and the other one was this new guy named Luther Vandross. Who the hell is Luther Vandross? Naturally, I played the Teddy for a couple days in my headset. Basil Nias and I were out in the Central Park on 59th Street in Columbus Circle. We went out to the park to, um, yeah, okay, we went to the park to smoke a joint. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I smoked a lot in them days. It was easy, it was easy to do. I don't apologize. And I had this Walkman, that's what they would call a Walkman, you can walk and play it. And he was amazed by it. Oh man, this thing is fantastic. So the first album we played while we were sitting out there was the Teddy Live album. And then we put the Luther record on. Well, Luther just blew us both away because this guy is like killer. Oh, we loved it from the time we played. The whole album was great. Luther became a huge star. Budweiser used to put these uh, jazz festivals on, what they called them, Bud Fest. Bud Fest was free concerts. You know, in certain cities. In Los Angeles, they came to San Diego. Your mom and I 
went down to San Diego for the weekend. We were living in Los Angeles. We go to the concert at the San Diego Civic Center, whatever it was. I'm hanging out backstage with the guys from Lakeside. Fantastic voyage. Those guys. I see Luther's little area not too far from there. So I'm wandering over, you know, Luther, you know, I'm just say hello. Well, when you get over to this area, there's all these people standing around me. And I see this person from the back with this long ponytail. This can't be real long ponytail. Like down to the top of your butt. He's in thigh high boots. I said, whoa, who is this? Hanging around Luther, all these people, none but guys, by the way. Nothing but guys. I gave it away. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? <laughs> so as I got a little closer, I'm trying to squeeze my way over to say hello. I'm this guy from this magazine, and uh, I'm not just some random person coming back here to say hello. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I love the music. I want to come and tell him. I, as the closer I got, it was like, nah, <laughs> I don't think I want to do this. Oh, there's too many guys, first of all. And then I can see Luther in his element. It was not the one we see on TV. He was very feminine. Very feminine. And this man thing with the hair turned around, he got a mustache, and oh, I'm saying, oh my God, what, what have I done here? I quickly just kind of eased out, you know, not trying to make those to myself. Go back and hang out with Lakeside. I was too shocked to say anything to anybody because I didn't think anybody knew. This is Luzo Vandross. He's the hottest thing since cereal. And he's a girl. <laughs> he's gay. <laughs> Not that gay is bad. I just didn't expect it. He went on stage, blew it out, singing all them songs. You think he's singing about girls? <laughs> In my mind, I'm saying, no. <laughs> This is not the same guy. And a young <laughs> We're driving back to LA the next day. We're on the highway driving from, and San Diego to LA is about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending on how fast you're driving. All these folks on the highway, you recognize people, you beep beep as you go by or whatever. Here comes Luther's car. Big ass Mercedes. I think it was like a 700, that one that looks like a limo with the curtains in the back. Swoosh by, like I said, CBS had a lot of money. He was a big star, so they probably put it out there for him, laid it out. Guess what? I saw the, the ponytail going by. <laughs> I told you my, nobody would ever believe this is the real Mr. Man. I'm saying, is this a guy, a girl, the man thing? What is it, you know? Who knew? But it came out later. But he, you know what? He never admitted to being gay. Never. Oh, well, it's pretty obvious if you were around him for more than a second. <laughs> you knew. Anyway, I'm not anti-gay. I'm just, this is my story for Lauren with this thing. There'll be more to come. Watch the L Speed show. It's really interesting.